Hello Hi-Fi people, Kelvin here from London. I review all the Hi-Fi equipment I can get my hands on. I have about 12 amplifiers, 12 pairs of speakers, six CD players, presently two turntables. I'm always comparing and contrasting equipment. A lot of my gear is vintage. Um, but today I'm going to do this one, Quad Vena 2, yes? This is uh, the amplifier, not the newly out one with the streamer in it, but I would imagine it's fairly similar. Um, this has been out since 2015, 45 watts a channel, and you can buy this for about 600, 650, 650 pounds. Now in my uh, comparisons, just even though when I listen to an amplifier, I listen to so much, you know, I know what they all sound like. But as a sort of direct comparison with this, I've been using this Arcam Alpha 8 from the 90s, I'd say, late 90s, and this uh, 1972 Sansui 441. Now, just as a curiosity, I looked up the distortion figures of this Quad Vena and this Sansui, and they go like this. The Quad Vena here is... 0.0009 yeah so that's is that nine it's more than it's like it's basically it's like one thousandth of a percent yes this uh sansu is rated as one percent one whole percent one point no 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 you know so this is this is like an extremely different uh i bring this up just to make the point that don't think that distortion figures will tell you what sounds good. And, you know, sometimes in that effort to get rid of all distortion, you can get rid of some other things too. But uh, anyway, that's not really the point, but I just thought it was kind of amazing. The, the discrepancy is just huge. Um, so, okay, so let me give you the picture of the sound. You know what I want to say about sound and modern equipment? I read these reviews, I started reading modern reviews and modern videos about new equipment and amazingly, quite often, they don't talk much about the sound or they talk about it in vagaries, you know. It's, uh, it's like them trying to make sound not the issue. Well, I, you know, I think it is the issue. It's 99% of the issue. <laughs> but it is for me. I think it is for most people. For most people, they're right. They might have like, oh, I want to be able to connect this here and there. Yeah, fair enough, blah, blah, blah. But if it doesn't sound good, if it's not giving you good feelings and you're not really enjoying it, that's the biggest deal. You know, you could be connected to uh, people in the Philippines and the moon. But if it doesn't sound good, uh, what well, you know, that's what you're going to enjoy for hours and hours and hours. So, you know, I got a bit annoyed with this, really. Anyway, the point is, if you want to find out all the connectivity of this, which is a lot, it's got a sort of Bluetooth thing here as well, uh, someone else can tell you about that. I'm going to tell you what it sounds like, but it's got lots of connectivity. You won't really want for more connectivity here. Ugh. If you want to have a look. And you've only got one set of speakers. I suppose that's a thing worth knowing. But you can probably channel it to other bits of the house with some powered speakers, you know. This is not really what I get up to. I just want to turn it on, put on a record, a CD, sit down. I don't want to press any. The less I have to do with computer screens, the happier I am. Okay, let's do the sound after all that waffle. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is tell you general and then we're going to particular with some songs. You will know what this amp sounds like by the end of this uh, review. First thing, it's okay. It's not a bad thing. It's not an annoying thing. Hasn't got anything particularly wrong with it. It's a competent performer, as they would say in a hi-fi magazine. Okay, but we have to go into a lot more detail to understand you know, what it's good at and what it's not good at. So songs I've been doing recently, test songs, you know, 
uh, Diana Kroll, what's it called? It's on this list. A Case of You. It's a very, you know, this Diana Kroll, you know, I, I, I should know Diana Kroll, but I only really recently know her properly. She, you know, she'll get your heartstrings, mate, you know. She will do something to you. The voice is, the voice, the, the, uh, the phrasing she uses, it's just so interesting, it's so human, just very involving, great singer, if you don't know her. So that song, Diana Kroll, A Case of You, but a live one, live in Paris. So it's not like massively produced, you know. Um, I'm also recently using 10cc I'm Not In Love with this mad beginning, with this, all these rising vocals. Um, the thing I want to say about that song is it literally sounds different on every damn amp or speakers you put it into. So that's kind of an interesting thing because it is, will be revealing just the beginning of that song. And as I say, that all sound different because it kind of is on a sort of something very specific about what they're doing with that. So it's a very specific sounds that some amps do different, you know, it's revealing. It's revealing in some way and, and different. Uh, and I am, I'm using Beat It, the beginning of Beat It, Michael Jackson. Okay. What I would say, Diana Kroll, let's think about these three amplifiers here. It's actually, this amp is not bad when things are like that Spartan. That kind of Spartan sound sort of works well. I'm pretty involved in her voice, you know? Now, if I go to this Sansui, I'm getting a, a larger, slightly larger voice slightly sort of in a way you might say less controlled but a little bit more vivid and airy maybe more involving maybe more involving uh and the, to be honest this arcam is kind of between the two of them it kind of sits between the two bass wise this amp you know like a lot of modern amplifiers you know i thought i want to say about modern equipment say the last 10 years it doesn't have the huge variations if i go back 70s 80s even 90s equipment you'll find things have large differences in how they sound some are very bassy some are not bassy some are very mid-rangey and you know with things like that it's all about how you tweak and match equipment you can mismatch things massively and it won't work well you know it seems to me nowadays everything's sounding similar because it's all using similar processors and you know amplifying you know equipment uh, chips all that stuff it's all sounding more similar to each other and uh, so, you know, it's worth noting, this old stuff is really a world where you, ha you can, I would see it as more fun. You could mess around with stuff and get great sounds and get more unusual sounds, you know, sounds that have got an immense amount of bass, if you want it, you know, or, you know, just like the variations are bigger. Anyway, bass wise, uh, this uh, Quad Vena 2, it's got it there. It's got it there in detail. It never like plums the depths. You never get dee boom boom boom. You know, a lovely big effortless, effortless bass note. Yes, you get it. This Sansu is actually a little bit more effortless, even though that is only rated at something like 18 watts. This is rated at 45 watts. There's not much difference in all of these in the welly they have. That's a British word for impact, largesse, you know, power, whatever you want to call it. Um, so the bass on here, <clears throat> I wish it was a little bit freer and a bit more lucid and, f yeah, freer. And, you know, I want to I hear those 
occasional bass note really do something good and interesting and dramatic, you know? Uh, but it doesn't quite work. But, you know, I can't say, oh, it's bass light or the, I can't hear the bass or follow it. I can. But it's just not giving me drama and big interest in the bottom. I mean, this thing is basically a nice, smooth sounding, unobjectionable, uh, you know, it's kind of oh, it's kind of middle of the road in a lot of ways. It's not uh, doing anything extremely right or wrong. Um, okay, let me, let me, what else can we say in it? Okay, I played Walk on the Wild Side, Lou Reed. Now I play that song in particular, really, you know, everything's nice and clear in there. The bass notes and the girl singers that come along and get louder and louder. That's a, you know, a great way to sort of understand how good the human voice is going to be and how much, you know, like emotion and reality you're getting from those voices. It wasn't bad on here. It was a little bit better on there, Santui. And as I say, it was kind of in the middle there on this Arcam. This Arcam is like, a, you know, you can buy these second hand for a hundred odd pounds. And it has a phono stage, which is actually, let me say this, the phono stage on there is a bit better than this quad phono stage. Phono stage is all right on here, but it's not for dedicated phono people. I mean, this is a, a multi talented thing apart from it doesn't have a brilliant sound but uh, the phono stage is okay but nothing to write home about so I didn't spend a lot of time on it but the actually the phono on that Alcam 8 is very nice it is very nice and to be honest the Sansui mm, oh, it's just a bit I just feels like it's a bit knackered quite frankly it doesn't sound as super good that phono stage anyway Let's go back sound wise. So this is good in it's good. It's you know, I fluctuated with this amp going from ah, uh, you know what, I quite like this amp. I could live with this amp. And then a bit later I'd go, uh, no, I can't. <laughs> I can't live with this amp. It's not giving me enough emotion. It's not it's it's a little bit too restrained. The picture is a little bit it just has this sense of undernourished power. It does have that sense where you kind of wish it had a, a bigger power supply, you know, was a more powerful amp, because it seems to struggle to really resolve everything when it gets big. You know, when there's big drama or extreme busyness, you get this sense, of, oh, it's kind of um, just about managing it. Uh, you know, it's like a car that's underpowered. You know, it's like a, a thousand cc car versus, you know, let's go to the extreme. Let's go to a five litre car where everything is effortless. Just has a small sense of not being able to deliver when it's busy or go down deep on the base. But you know what? I mean, I, I have these thoughts a lot, like people will buy this amp. It will have a lot of detail. It's smooth. It's not uh, objectionable. Uh, you probably think it's just fine. But what it doesn't give you is like the great presence. You know, that presence, that reality, that absolute, you know, the sort of the thing where the voice really takes your breath away just doesn't have that you know um yeah okay maybe that's it now, let me say so this is 650 pounds to me i i wouldn't have it for that money i mean i i won't have it. I, mean, I i don't want to spend any money that's just what i'm like but uh i don't feel that that i i feel like you'll be disappointed I've got to say that, you know, I feel like it doesn't give you anything in great abundance, but it's fine. It is fine and it doesn't have major shortcomings. So I can't really knock it. And I would imagine it compares favorably with, you know, 
its peers, but to me is just lacking in a bit of magic. Just lacking that give me something in abundance, bass, mid, treble, do something magical for me. That's how I see it. And, you know, it's just not giving me any involvement. I mean, if I went round someone's house and they had this, I wouldn't be sitting there going, oh, this isn't any good, I don't like this at all. It'll be just fine. But if I was going to spend multiple hundreds of pounds on an amplifier, I think I'd just be like, okay, is that it? Oh, all right. I thought it was, you know, I, I, I would think you'd get something better for £650. That would be my hope, you know. But, uh, you know, I have all these amps, which I've bought over the years, being a mad bargain hunter. So that probably did cost me like, a hundred quid, something like that. This probably cost me that like 60, 70 quid. Of course, this is 50 years old, at least. Uh, and it could go wrong at any point. So, you know, that's the point in buying something new, isn't it? It's not gonna go wrong straight away. But yeah, okay, I'm not mad about this amp, but it's an okay thing. That's what I wanna say. And it does do all these functions, if that's what you're into. But to me, it should be the sound, because if it ain't sounding good, you ain't getting the joy. You're not getting the joy. Okay, uh, please do like and subscribe. I must stress this now because I could. There's YouTube has a funny way of behaving, and for some reason, I'm not getting the exposure I used to get. So do like and subscribe if you like it. Okay, thanks. Bye for now.